Hey guys, so I will be showing you how to create a URDF uh, file through SOLIDWORKS. I know that I had some trouble finding uh, material online, so I hope that uh, this helps you. So let's get to it. So the first thing that you want to do is open your assembly, your robot assembly in SOLIDWORKS. In my case, it's this uh, manipulator. And you can see that the manipulator has a whole bunch of parts. And that can create problems when you're creating that URDF file. So what I recommend doing is saving all of these parts into subparts or, or groups, right? So here in my case, I want to have um, four parts, um, one for each link. So for example, we would have one part that would consist of only this, this base is a uh, rotary table then this would be our first link this would be our second link third link fourth link and then finally the the end effector all right so what i what i did was i uh, basically only selected the links that i want to save i'm sorry the parts that i want to save so i'm going to start with uh, link one so we want that the stepper motor. All right, that's too much. And the encoder. Okay, I do not want uh, this right here. Okay, so this will be the first part. So I basically just keep those and delete the rest. All right, so let me delete everything else. And there might be there might be another way of doing this, but this is just what worked for me. Okay, so after I have this part right here, I'm gonna go and save it. So I'm gonna save as, but instead of saving it as an assembly, we're gonna save it as a part. So SolidWorks part right here, and I'm not gonna do it because I I already did it. Um, you can see I have a link one, link two, link three, and, and uh, link four. All right, so after you have all your links, and let me show you what they look like. Let me open one of them. Oh, this is link one part. All right, so this is my first link. Let's take a look at another link All right so this would be what the uh, second link looks like and doing this it just makes it easier and it, it uh, prevents any further problems when you're creating the URDF file because if you have a whole bunch of parts each part will generate its own mesh file as a SDL format but if you have your parts saved like this um, then you'll get one SDL file per part so then after you have all your parts saved like that, then you go ahead and recreate your assembly, but this time using the, the part files. And this is what the robot looks like in my case. All right, so this is what the robot looks like. You can see from all those parts that we had, now I only have six parts. So the turntable, end effector, link one, link two, link three and link four. All right, so once we have it like that, you wanna make sure that you have the URDF exporter tool. To check, you can go to tools, scroll down. You might have to use this little arrow to see it. And there's the export as URDF. If you don't have the exporter, it should be free if you have a SolidWorks um, license if you go to solidworks the solidworks website and search for urdf exporter there should be uh, a download um there should be a, there should be a download button okay so we go to export so we want to save before continuing yes okay so now uh, here on the left you get this little menu. See it's titled URDF exporter. Here the base link is automatically generated. Now what you wanna do 
is select the number of chow links. Well, actually, before that, you want to first select the base link. So in our case, the base link would be right here. Right, it would be the, the turntable. Yep, that is our, our base link. And how many childs does this have? Well, it only has one child, which will be link one. So right here, we switch this, call it one. All right, so we created our first, we can call it the root of the tree, which is the base link. And then it has one branch or one child. Right now it's empty. So now we want to select this first, first branch. So we click on it. It's called empty. So let's actually name it link one. You can also name the joint. So this will be the joint between the base link and link one. Uh, we'll call it joint zero. All right. Reference coordinate system, you can select automatic generate, reference, automatically generate. All right, this is also important. So the joint type, we want it to be a revolute joint. Okay, and now we select the link one, which in our case is right here. Select it, okay. You can see that now you have a base link and your first link. Does it have any child? Yes, so we increase number of child links we basically do the same thing for all links so let's go through it okay and then this last one I won't call it a link, I'll just call it end effector. And then joint name, let's call it end effector joint. And this will be a fixed link or a fixed joint, sorry, because we don't have any motor on the wrist. All right, so we got the base link, link one, link two, three, four, and the end effector, I forgot to select it. There we go. Okay, so once we have the whole tree, then we will select um, preview and export. And now it's generating the URDF file. What's neat about it is that you can actually see it generating the axis. So this is the axis of rotation of the first joint. And you don't really have to specify the location of that axis. It, it automatically solves for that. All right, we got the axis for the next joint. All right, so once it fin finishes generating, then you should see this um, URDF exporter window where you see your whole tree. And I just noticed that you, I don't know why I changed the joint type, but you want to change the joint type to um, Revolute if that's what you're using. Or you could do continuous if you don't have any lower, upper and lower uh, bounds on the joint. So we select uh, Revolute. Here are your, your bounds or your limits. You can have um, uh, limits in your lower and upper angles, your effort in newton meters and your velocity. All right, so let's change that for all the joints.
So for example, if, if we knew that the manipulator had a range of um, 90 degrees on one side and 90 degrees on the other, then we can say that the lower bound would be negative 3.14 over 2. I don't think you can do division here. So let's just say negative 1.57. Upper bound would be 1.57. Effort, uh, this is in torque, so maybe 10 meters. Velocity, radians per second, let's just say 100. Okay, and you can do that for each one of them. Once you have that, then you click next. Okay, what is this? The inertia. Okay, so here you can see that it generates um, the origin, x, y, z, rho, pitch, yaw, the moment of inertia. And this is the, the uh, inertial matrix. And it does that for every link that we created. So that's why it's easier to create, um, create to group the parts like this because you have the moment of inertia of all the parts together as opposed to having a moment of inertia matrix for each individual part and now you want to you want to export the urdf uh, and the measure so if you're going to be working with like visualization software for example in, in ross if you're going to be using something like arvis or if you're going to you want to simulate in matlab or any other simulator software you want to have the SDL files, so you want to export the URDF and the meshes. Click on that. All right, that's where I want to save it. So let's save it in my desktop. All right, that should do it. So let's see, see if we can find it. Okay, so we, here we have the uh, folder that we created, and then inside we have this folder ca called Part Assembly Tutorial, which is the name of the um, the name of the uh, assembly file and it basically creates a, a ROS package and you can use if you're using ROS but the URDF file itself is inside here and there you have it you have your URDF file here and you have your meshes in this meshes folder with your six STL files